This is the River Valley Road and Property Lim Brothers is bringing you to a very exclusive development with just 46 units. 1206 square feet, 3 bedrooms, 3 bathrooms, close to 200,000 on the renovations. Okay, let's do this again. Yes. <laughs> Residences at 338A. Let's go have a look at the place. So just to share a bit more about this project, this place is freehold status, total of only 46 units. And this stack that we're actually on is more exclusive and more private because there are only two units that actually share this entire lift lobby. This basically functions almost like a private lift kind of setting. It was TOP in 2004, so putting at just under shy of 17 years, so which I think is still pretty young age. You're actually coming into this very modern looking kind of glass tower. And something interesting also to note is that this entire unit was fully gut renovated just about three years ago. A lot of the finishings and detailing that you'll see in the home has been well thought out for. And overall, there's a total of about 200,000 already pumped into this home. You can simply bring your luggage and kind of move on right on here. Uh, you actually get a side gate that takes you directly to Killini Road. So that's where you find a lot of famous eatery. What's really great about living in this segment of River Valley is that you get to enjoy closeness to the MRT. This is just about a six to eight minutes walk to Somerset MRT. And of course, in future, when in 2022, when the Great World City MRT completes. That's also another connecting station that you can walk to. So moving on, we're going to have a chat about a deep dive into the location analysis of where uh, we're actually located today. Now, we are just off of River Valley Road, uh, right in between Killini as well as Oxley Road, in the middle of actually five MRT stations, namely Great World, Orchard, Somerset, Dobigod, as well as Fort Canning. And one of the three boutique projects along this little steep road, you'll find a River Valley Court, residences at 338A, and of course, Valley House. So this is almost a cow de sac because technically no one would drive in here unless they are a resident at one of these three developments. So again, bringing you more privacy as well as serenity in this area. I think you'll find that this location that we're at is probably one of the closest to the Somerset MRT, coming in at under uh, 500 meters away. And of course, the upcoming Great World Station, which is along the Thompson East Coast Line, which is stated to be completed in 2022, will again bring you more connectivity to other parts of Singapore as well. And if you're taking the Thompson East Coast Line from Great World MRT, it's one stop away to Orchard, four stops to Stephen, where you can transfer to the downtown line if you want to get to places such as Botanic Gardens as well as Bugis. And in the opposite direction from the Great World MRT, in two stops, it will take you to Outram Park, where this is an intersection with the North East Line and the East West Line. And two stops after Outram Park will bring us to Shenton Way, which is your CBD, Central Business District of Singapore. And now if you're driving, uh, this is definitely a place with massive convenience because you can head over to River Valley Road and of course Clemenceau Avenue, which will lead us to the CTE, which is your Central Expressway, right? So I think in terms of location-wise, I think nothing beats living in the heart of Singapore right here in the core central region. Alright, so now I'll take you through the home now that Mark's done sharing a little bit more about the project. So if you pull up the original floor plan, this would be where the original dining area is situated at and they have brought the dining area to where the original living room area is. And I think that was such a great choice because it means that you have a great distance to your TV. It also means you have this entire span of space for you to utilize in your living area. All this paneling that you see, this beautiful dark oak finish, but everything feels really sleek and really modern. As you step in, you'll notice that you don't have any long walkways also. There's no extended foyer area or, or corridor. You have so much space along this span of the wall. But one of the most striking things that you see in the living room would be this showpiece feature wall with the LED lighting behind. This cost 25000 and this is so beautiful. And this really elongates and expands your living and dining area. And over here, the dining area is separated by this vertical trellis, which is in the same dark oak finish, the feature wall. And this is great because this not only serves as design feature, but it also acts as a separation between your dining and the living space, and it segregates it really nicely. So you have the dining area behind here. This dining area would easily accommodate a round table. It's great because you are just off your windows, and you have full height sliding windows here, which means that uh, you have so much natural light streaming into your dining and your living room. So another interesting thing is there used to be an entrance to one of the common bedrooms uh, on this side of the wall as well, which
which they have covered up and opened up the entrance of the common bedroom over along the corridor which I will show you in a bit but this living area is great. So another thing you might be wondering is where is the kitchen? So at one glance you don't think there's a door but actually this leads you into the kitchen. The entire kitchen was gut renovated just three years ago as well, so the tiles on the floor is just really stone-like. The cabinets are all acrylic, so this is really fancy, good stuff. It's not your regular laminate. As you can see, if I op just open up just this one portion here, all of the storage solutions in the kitchen is so well thought out and well planned. They have used bloom for all of their hinges. All of the drawers and the cabinets, they're all soft closed. The switches are nicely concealed here, so this is all the grand switches. They have sort of reorientated the kitchen a little bit in terms of the layout. So you'll see that the kitchen is quite an angular shape, but they have designed it in such a way where they have fully utilised the space and they have really incorporated so much countertop space and storage as well. So the original uh, position of the hood and hop, it used to be right over here and what they've done is they've converted this area into sort of their larder and their pantry so you have the built-in microwave and oven right over here these are Bosch appliances they've also carved out a little coffee nook here um, to prepare your drinks lots of storage pull-out drawers I also really love this really minimalist uh, drawer pools and then behind this panel here they have concealed the rubbish chute the original position of a sink the sink used to be right over here uh, right where the window is but they have really thoughtfully changed it up and they have positioned the hood and hop here so that when you're cooking, you get a little bit of sunlight and you can also open up the windows for ventilation. You have a mix of both induction as well as a gas hob. This is all Bosch. Your backsplash, so they've kept it very clean in this kitchen. This is tempered glass, so it's really easy to maintain and it gives a very modern look. So right over here, these are two additional small freezers, and but this would be the main fridge. So in fact, you can build up more joinery here. And then as we head into the yard area, uh, you have three panels or windows here which illuminate your yard space and also helps to provide ventilation for when you're doing your drying or your washing. And then behind this door, this is your utility, which can be your storeroom or a helper's room. Um, it can accommodate a bit for your helper. So this was the kitchen and uh, now we'll head back out. So let's have a deep dive and look at some of the different layout comparisons here at Residences at 338A. So there are a total of five different layout types from type A to type E, which is spread across the five different stacks here from stack 01 to stack 05. Our unit is the type E layout configuration and what we noticed if we compare among the five different layout plans is that only two out of the five are with this similar type of layout where the rooms are all tucked towards one side of the unit itself, which is at stack 01 and 04. With that being said, at stack 04, there are living and dining spaces are segregated. They also have a longer walkway in the entrance foyer zone whereas our unit here at Stack 01 we have the living and dining kind of flowing seamlessly towards both areas. Our unit of course has the southwest northeast orientation so southwest is where we're facing out towards the open and of course your northeast direction is where your main door is looking towards and only at Stack 01 and 05 uh, you'll find that there are actually no bay windows in the common bedrooms. So at Stack 02 we notice that once you enter the main door you'll find one bedroom located right on beside the main door entrance. At stack 03, uh, you have one common room kind of tucked uh, on the opposite side beside the kitchen which is away from the other bedrooms. At stack 05, you also get a curved master bedroom and this stack is located the closest to Killini Road. In bedroom 2 of this stack, you'll notice elongated type of walkway when you kind of enter into the room. So at stack 01 and 02, this is tucked right in the inner area. Right, so just to sum it up, I think if, if you are shortlisted uh, the project here at Residences at 338A and you prefer something in the quiet areas of the compound, then I think you would probably shortlist uh, this unit that we have here at Stack 01. So moving on, let's have a look at the pricing analysis. Now if we do a quick search on the property portals and we're looking for a 3 beta in the River Valley kind of zoning, residences at Killini, which PSF is at about 2,300 odd per square foot. We have the abode at Devonshire, which is coming in at about 2,100 odd per square foot. You have Urbana that's coming in at about 2,400 odd per square foot. One Devonshire at 2,005. Eight St. Thomas at 2,007. And the suites at Central at 2,009. So these developments are all freehold status. I think they're all uh, ranging from different 
different kind of uh, age periods when they were completed. Then you might be asking, but Mark, what if I'm looking at some of the new launches in the area? So let's have a quick look at the Iveria. The per square foot pricing is going at about 2005 to 2007 per square foot. Avenir is going at about 2008 to 3003 per square foot. For some of the leasehold kind of uh, mega projects in the area, we have uh, Irwell Hill Residences. It's going at about 2005 to 2700 dollars per square foot. Martin Modern, which just achieved TOP, going at about 2006 to 3000 dollars per square foot. And then one of the most awaited new launches at the Clark Key area, Canning Hill Pierce, which is a 99 year leasehold, is already 82% sold at the time of this recording in just under two weeks from its launch date, priced at 2800 to 3100 odd per square foot. And if we come back to our unit here at Residences at 338A, we're priced just under 2300 odd per square foot with already $200,000 of renovations pumped into the unit for you. This was TOP in 2004, a freehold status priced at 2.75 million. I think 338A really stands out in terms of the trifactor because in terms of per square foot pricing at under 2300 odd dollars per square foot, in terms of size, we're standing at 1206 square feet as compared to some of the new launches which start from about 900 odd square feet. The last thing is that this whole unit has just been renovated under three years ago with $200,000 already pumped in which will stay with the home. Right, so I think that makes up the PLB's a trifactor. So you'll see a lot more details later on which Beatrice will share more. common bedroom. Currently this is sort of used as spare room or guest room but it's a great size and as part of the renovations they've also changed up where the entrance of the door is located. So previously the door was uh, right about here. In fact this room used to have two doors so you can enter from your dining area or you can enter from the walkway over here but uh, they have chose to shift the wardrobe from over this side of the wall to this side so that you can have three panels over here and then you still have a great space to put up to a queen size bed in this room. Floor to ceiling, cabinetry has been done. Another great thing about all of the bedrooms also you'll notice the great ceiling height. So this is about 3 meters. And also another great thing is that you get a really quiet facing in all of the bedrooms. So in this room um, you have the original marble flooring which is similar to um, the marble in the living and dining area and this is the only room that has the marble. Now we'll check out the second bedroom. So this is bedroom number 2 and the unique thing about bedroom 2 for this 1206 square feet layout is that you don't get any bay windows. This bedroom is slightly bigger than the one that you just saw. The flooring here is different as well. So this is the original parquet that has been stained to a darker tone. So with this room being a little bit bigger, it also means that you have slightly more wardrobe space. So you have 4 here instead of 3 in the other room. All of the joinery, this is great quality. So this is all soft clothes. Right now it's a kid's room as you can see but this room can easily accommodate uh, a king, um, even have room for maybe a study table or a vanity over here. And also another thing to point out, for all of the bedrooms, the door frame has been re-varnished to this darker walnut tone. So now you might be thinking, what if I plan to buy a non-renovated type of unit as compared to buying one that's renovated such as the one that we have. So let's have a look at the numbers. And now if we have a look at uh, 338A, one of the recent transactions that happened just a couple of months ago was going at 2011 per square foot. And if we assume that that is the price for a non-renovated unit and we multiply it by our size here, 1206 square feet, that puts us at about 2.42 million with a 25% down payment plus your 4% buyer stamp duty minus 15,400. That would set your initial down payment at about $686,000. If renovation costs, we take a ballpark of about $100 per square foot multiplied by the overall size at 1206 square feet. That will put us at about $120,000 in terms of renovation. And the total initial down payment would then come up close to about $806,000. So assuming that you are doing a full gut renovation like what our owners have done, you'll probably need to take on a rental of let's say about 6 months. And if we multiply that by a rental of about $4,000, that will work out to be about twenty four. dollars Okay. If you add that together, that will come up to be a total figure of about 830000 in terms of cash and CPF outlay. Let's say based on a listed price at $2.75 million, the 29% initial down payment works out to be about $782,000, which then works out to a difference of about $48,000. Right? Of course, this is assuming that the bank's valuation is able to match the purchase price and you can take on a full 75% uh, loan. Now, so I think if you are someone that appreciates the renovations that have been put in by our owners right here, then why don't you consider shortlisting this property, you know, something that you can move on straight in uh, upon completion as well. 
Next up, let's also have a look at the rental kind of play in this area. Let's say purchase price of 2.75 million. The loan amount works out to be about 2.062 million with a 25% down payment at 687,500. Monthly repayment works out to be about 6825 per month. And if we break that down into the principal and interest, principal is 4763 and interest at 2063. The recent rental rates going here at 338A are going at about 4005 to 4006, especially for a well renovated unit like ours. And we think the rental here will definitely have a minimal vacant gap periods because this location I think is simply great because we're within just six to eight minutes from two MRT stations and definitely caters to a very strong kind of tenant pool right so I think that sums up if you're planning for a bit of a hybrid kind of a rental play before deciding to move in so moving on Beatrice will show you the rest of the home all right so this is a really unique common bathroom you'll see you have double doors uh, that slide open and this common bathroom is so generous in size and the great thing is you hardly ever see this sort of almost like a dumbbell layout for the common bathroom where you have the shower on one side and then you have the WC located on the other. So the bathroom has been entirely renovated as well so they have changed up the tiles for the floor as well as the walls. For the tap where the shower head and the mixer, this is all XOR which is the Ultralux series of Hans Goa. So this is really fancy stuff. The sink, you have a Durovit sink and the tap is by Hans Goa. You have the mirror with the LED lighting. Lots of storage underneath. Uh, for the vanity, this is all acrylic and this is quartz scissor stone. In the shower area, you also have a rain shower by Hans Grohe and a little ventilation window in that corner over there. So we love this common bathroom, it feels so luxe. But now let's go check out the final part of the house, the master bedroom. Alright guys, so now follow me into the beautiful master bedroom. So well, as we walk in, the first thing you'll see is this leads you into your master ensuite. And this has entirely been renovated, so gut renovated. You have really generous sized shower over here, double ventilation windows, sanitary wares, uh, this is all Duravit. This is all storage. Hidden behind you have mirror cabinet. For the countertops, this material is all Caesar stone. And you have lots of storage underneath to all acrylic cabinets. We really love the neutral grey marble-like tones that you see in this bathroom. Very modern and luxurious master ensuite. Before we explore the sleeping area, we also have ample wardrobe storage here. So this is in like a dark tones or walnut finish. All the hinges are all bloom. Soft clothes are very nicely done. You have four panels here. You have full height floor to ceiling windows enveloping you from both sides of the room. So the feature of, of this master bedroom is this vertical wooden trellis which they've done for the bed head and they've also integrated. It gives you also a little bit more privacy from the windows behind you. Definitely a very generous size master. Uh, if you look upwards you'll also see the beautiful cove lighting that's been done. So another interesting thing that they've done is the original doorway to the bathroom is actually over here but they've reoriented the the entrance to the bathroom to over here so that not only do you get a longer vanity or a longer countertop, it also means that your bed doesn't face the entrance to your bathroom so we think that's great. Moving on, uh, let's have a chat about the future master plan developments for the entire kind of Orchard and River Valley zonings by the URA. In the Tanglin area, this is dated for the arts and artisanal. In the Orchard shopping belt, of course, this is where you get all your malls such as Ion Orchard and of course Paragon and many more. And of course at Somerset, this is zoned for the youthful and energetic uh, entertainment spot. And where Dobby God is, this is going to become a large green basis for kind of family and friends to kind of gather at. And of course not forgetting, you have the entire Thompson East coastline that's going to be completed in phase 2 in 2022. For condo facilities, you have a swimming pool, you have a children's play pool, a barbecue area, a gym and multi-purpose hall, a reflexology park, children's play area, water feature, a reflecting pool as well as two levels of basement car park. So for grocery shopping, you have the 24-hour fair price at Orchard Grand Court which is just about a 2-3 to three minutes walk from the side gate of this project itself and of course many other supermarkets located in the shopping malls in the area. Now in terms of malls along the entire shopping valley, you have 313 at Somerset, Orchard Central, Cathay Cine Leisure, uh, Ion Orchard, the Centre Point, and of course many other more malls beside us. For primary schools, you have River Valley Primary within 1 km, and within 2 km, you have St. Margaret's Primary, ACS Junior, Alexandra Primary, and Zhang De Primary. So this was 
Lotus Residences at 338A. This is a three-bedroom unit at 126 square feet. If you want to keep your price quantum below the $2.8 million mark at a PSF below the $2,300 odd dollars per square foot, plus this unit is fully renovated with about $200,000 in renovations already pumped in. If you want to have a physical viewing of this place, give our listings manager a call. Uh, their links are located right down below. And if you want to watch more videos, subscribe to our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and TikTok channels. My name is Mark. Beatrice, Poppy Lynn Brothers. Brothers. Always, Always happy, happy to show you the place. place. What's she feeling? You tell me when to tell me when to open. <laughs> uh, and can't open the door. <laughs>